Well, hi there, friends. Good Monday morning to you all. It's just after 6 a.m. I'm Channing Curtis. And I'm Brandon T. Jones. Yes, happy to be in here filling in for Tim Pham right now. And bless that uh, Channing allows me to sit next to her. So, yeah, I hope you all are doing well out there. We're happy to have you, Brandon. I mean, it's oldie, right? You know, Nicole and Hernandez gets to join us sometimes. Yeah. So we have to mix it up just a little bit. Let Brandon take it, take a load off for a little bit. You know, chill yeah. in the studio for some Yeah, time. I'm happy about that. I don't have to be out there in the cold weather this morning. And I... <laughs> Uh, speaking of the cold weather, Thomas, uh, what is it looking like out there this week? Yeah, at 32 degrees, you Ooh. would have definitely had the hat on and the yellow jacket. And I, I mean, I like it when, when Brandon's out live because I get to see what the weather is like just from the camera image there. That's a, the little secret eye from uh, the weather center here. But yeah, this morning, 32 degrees. A normal cold out there. It is November after all. It is Thanksgiving this week. So with our temperatures being that cool, you'd come to expect it by now. Thankfully, there's no fog this morning and there's no snow like we had yesterday morning. In fact, the visibility reports are looking quite good. So I wanted to make sure to pass that information along to you. And there are the current temperatures did slip a few degrees in Coeur d'Alene, now down to 28 degrees. It's still at 32 in Spokane. And we got a current temp of 30 in Pullman. This morning, Washington State Patrol is looking for a person involved in a crash on I-90. Now, this all happened on eastbound I-90 near the Salvney exit around 930 last night. According to WSP, an Acura driven by a Spokane woman crashed into the back of another car. The Acura ended up in a ditch and the Spokane woman was taken to the hospital and charged with driving under the influence. The driver of the car that was hit left the area immediately after the crash. They're now facing charges for felony hit and run. Did the people who ran the ranch, should they know what they were doing? Yes, they did. They ignored it. They did nothing. Now to a landmark settlement. After years of reported abuse against foster children, the state of Washington is paying nearly $17 million to victims from the J-Bar D-Boys Ranch near Spokane. Now we do want to warn you this morning that some of the details of these survivor stories could be difficult for viewers to hear. The state will pay $16.5 million to settle lawsuits brought forward by 12 boys who say that they were abused there. The suit claims the state failed to protect them. Survivors say they suffered physical and sexual abuse from older residents and staff members. These were boys that were 17 to 18 that were privileged, that had privileges within the JBRD ranking system. They used rape and sexual assault and torture as forms to get obedience. That's what it was used for. And they didn't seem to have a problem with it. Kelly McShane is one of the 12 boys from the ranch that brought suit against the state, DSHS, and the state's Child Protective Services. Uncovered documents show that as early as 1979, DSHS was warned that children were being physically and sexually abused but did nothing. The first step to closing the ranch happened in 1984 when DSHS appointed a new investigator to look into the claims. Once he arrived at the facility, testimony shows that he said it needed to be shut down. In the next year, county officials and the sheriff put pressure on state officials to step in, eventually closing it down. It's a little after 6.04. Let's take a look at your morning rush. More news and less time. New this morning, a Spokane man's in jail this morning after a pursuit ended in a crash in Bonner County last night. According to deputies, they chased after a stolen car on Highway 95 just after 6 in the evening. They used spike strips to stop the car just north of Athol and the driver ran away. The driver, Zachary Hawthorne, was of Spokane and was later tracked down by a police dog. He now faces more charges for possession of a stolen vehicle and felony eluding. Two banks on Spokane South Hill were robbed on Friday. Spokane police say the Numerica Credit Union in the 4900 block of South Regal was robbed on Friday afternoon. About 15 minutes later, SPD says another man attempted to rob a security guard on 57th and Regal. That suspect has been arrested. Spokane police told Crim2 News these robberies appear to be unrelated. Prosecutors want to move Chad Daybell's trial to a new location. They want to move the trial from Ada County back to Fremont County in eastern Idaho. Daybell and his wife Lori Vallow were charged with the murders of Daybell's first wife and Vallow's two children. Vallow was convicted earlier this year. The state argued because of the media coverage this case has received, Daybell could not receive a fair and impartial trial in Ada County. Daybell's trial begins is set to begin in April. 
An Idaho death row inmate is asking the state to throw out his death sentence. According to his defense team, Thomas Creech was sentenced to death in 1982 by a judge, not by a jury. They say that the practice was ruled unconstitutional in 2002, adding he deserves a trial by jury. Creech was sentenced to death for the murder of a fellow inmate. The Idaho Supreme Court will hold oral arguments in February to decide whether to proceed with the execution. I think it would definitely make me feel more comfortable, especially being alone down here. And the holiday season's kicking off in downtown Spokane with more security patrols. The Downtown Spokane Partnership started its new pilot program to expand security coverage in the downtown core. The effort includes expanding the hours for downtown ambassadors and hiring a new private security company called Gojo Patrol. That right there is a look at your morning rush. Former First Lady Rosalind Carter died this weekend. She was 96 years old and battling dementia. Now, both President Joe Biden and First Lady Jill Biden are reacting to her death. They're really an incredible family because they brought so much grace to the office. She was well known for her efforts on mental health and caregiving and women's rights. Across social media, former presidents also commented on her death. Former President Barack Obama wrote, Rosalind Carter's life is a reminder that no matter who we are, our legacies are best measured, not in our awards or accolades, but in the lives we touch. Former President Bill Clinton said, Rosalind Carter was a compassionate and committed champion of human dignity everywhere. And former President Donald Trump posted online saying, a devoted first lady and a beloved wife to her husband for 77 years. Now, former First Lady Rosalind Carter was known as the Steel Magnolia when she first arrived in Washington. Natalie Brand has a look back at her historic life. Rosalind Carter was the type of First Lady the country had never met before. Not just an advisor to her husband, but a political partner in the White House. I like to know what's going on. Jimmy has always um, involved me. She was the first of the first ladies to sit in on cabinet meetings as well as briefings from the National Security Council. And she acted as the president's emissary abroad, mostly on visits to Latin America. My role was more one of a sounding board for Jimmy. He could explain the issues to me and um, in the process think them through. Born in Plains, Georgia, at age 18, she married Jimmy Carter. The couple had four children and ran the Carter family's peanut business. Rosalind helped Jimmy Carter's campaign to become governor of Georgia and his successful 1976 run for the White House. As first lady, her top domestic cause was mental health care. She chaired the president's commission to promote better services and to protect those with mental illness from discrimination. She continued that work after leaving the White House and also advocated for better support for America's seniors, taking that battle to Capitol Hill. We face a national crisis in caregiving, especially for our elderly citizens. She was a full partner in the activities of the Carter Center, which the couple launched after leaving the White House to promote conflict resolution and advance human rights. She worked alongside her husband with Habitat for Humanity to build homes for the poor. Betty Ford was my friend. In 2011, and she I'm paid tribute to, to another first lady but and her friend, life. Betty Ford. Her honesty gave hope to others every single day. The former first couple continued to call Plains home, facing health challenges together in their later years. When the family announced that at age 95, Rosalind Carter had dementia, it said it hoped sharing the news would increase conversations about mental health, an issue she advocated for much of her long life. Natalie Brandt, CBS News. Carter's funeral is set for Wednesday of next week. It will only be open to family and invited friends. More public events are scheduled for next Monday and Tuesday. It's six pen. Another check of our weather forecast for today and tomorrow are expected to be fairly quiet days weather wise. Our next storm system doesn't arrive until Wednesday. And as we look at the North Pacific, we can clearly see where that storm system is already brewing. That cold front attached to it will pass by in the back half of the day Wednesday for the inland Northwest. But up until then, should be fairly quiet and normal November conditions. 41, the expected high temperature today in Spokane. And for the kids that have a couple more days of school for this week, yes, a cool start to the day, but cloudy conditions mean that those temperatures are largely in the low 30s or upper 20s right now, but it does stay cool for the day, even with a little afternoon sunshine.